Have you always dreamed about a career in sports broadcasting but aren't sure where to begin? Well, if so, then look no further than the Sports Emphasis Program at the Ohio Media School. Whether in front of the camera, on the microphone, or behind the scenes, you'll learn from a pro to be a pro in the Sports Emphasis Program at the Ohio Media School. You'll get hands-on training and live in-the-field experience at some of Ohio's biggest sporting events. You'll be the star of your very own webcast, and you'll get the opportunity to interview some of Ohio's biggest athletes. Call us today at 614-655-5250 or visit our website at beonair.com. Can you see yourself working on TV, radio, or social media? As media professionals, we make our voice heard. Call the Ohio Media School and be a part of something bigger than you and me. You'll train and get the skills you need to work in TV, radio, social media, film, and much more. I graduated and now am working as a director of marketing at a local radio station. My future is set. Call the Ohio Media School now and be a part of something bigger. 614-723-9675. 
Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome in here to Columbus, Ohio for today's TBL basketball matchup between the Owensboro Thoroughbreds and the Columbus Condors. I am Seth Donahoe, and alongside me, Randall Smith. Randall, I think it's a great day for basketball, man. Man, it's a perfect day for basketball. Just get to see some uh, good basketball on a Sunday afternoon. Can't wait to see it. I've never seen either one of these two teams before. Uh, so I'm just ready to see a, a good basketball game today. Well, I'll tell you, we, are, we will be in for a good basketball game. As last year, we were able to uh, do some of these broadcasts for the Columbus Condors. Unfortunately, the season did end early uh, due to the COVID-19 times that we live in today, but it is a new season and these are uh, uh, two great teams. The second game of the year uh, only as Owensboro yesterday played Dayton at Dayton and won by a score of 128 to 121 and Columbus played on Friday ended up losing the game to Indy Express by a score of 115 to 105. However, Columbus is at home today and they will be looking to get their first win of the season. And as we're getting ready for the Star Spangled Banner, we'll stand up for this. Ready for some basketball. Yes, I think that, that, uh, that Star Spangled uh, Banner snuck up on us. I don't think we were quite ready for that. I think that was uh, pink. <laughs> Man, they wanted to make it as uh, authentic as possible, having a uh, lifelike crowd here today. There are some uh, so, some fans out here yes. in the stands today. Uh, of course, limited capacity, but still, nonetheless, there are fans out here to cheer on both of these teams. Uh, Randall, let's go ahead and go over the roster for both of these teams first, uh, starting out for the visiting team, the Owensboro Thoroughbreds. For the Owensboro uh, Thoroughbreds, we have Darius Nunn, uh, point guard. We have Matthew Hart. He's another point guard. Corey Wilford, shooting guard. Donovan Griffin, he's a forward. Cameron Moore, he's a forward. Hunter Knopfinger, Hunter Noffinger, he's a point guard. Javion Eves is a shooting guard. Chuck... Agabato, he's a center. Michael Davenport, forward. Evan Milligan, forward. Meshack Lufau, he's a forward slash center. And we have the head coach, Mark Anderson, and the assistant coach, Brad Zeller. And uh, interesting to see Chuck Agbato, a uh, player from Nigeria, and Meshack Lufayo, a player from Canada. So it's nice to see in these leagues some uh, uh, you, you get some um, foreign players out here on, on these rosters, which is always good to see. It's not just local talent, but they do go around uh, all over the country, really, and with Agbato all over the world to be able to get some of these players. Right. Now, looking at the rosters for the Columbus Condors, we have uh, A.J. Davis, Jalen Hearn, 
Kenny Council, Jalen Benton, Boo Osborne, Richie Gordon, Aaron Jackson, Khalil McCormick, Brett McKnight, Todd Brown Jr., and A.J. Stewart. And a, a lot of these guys, uh, A.J. Davis, Jalen Benton, Boo Osborne, Richie Gordon, and Brett McKnight, Todd Brown as well, returning to this Columbus Condors team from last year. So these guys have some experience playing together. Uh, McKnight, Osborne, and Gordon also played for uh, uh, the Ohio Bruins, another semi-pro team that played here at this United Sports Center. Uh, their season just ending and now coming over to play for the Condors as this game is underway. Richie Gordon wins the tip to Boo Osborne. A lot of familiar names for the Condors. Like I said, I haven't seen them play as uh, number 70, A.J. Stewart took that shot and made it. But um, A.J. Davis, I'm familiar with him. Um, Lyndon McKinley and James Madison. Also familiar with Aaron Jackson at Gahanna High School and um, Andre Wesson, obviously, from Westerville South and Ohio State. So a lot of these guys, as well as Brett McKnight from the Bruins, I'm, I'm very familiar with these guys. So I'm anxious to see what's going to go on today. And it helps when you have a lot of these guys, not only from the area, but they've played together, you know, throughout the, the past few years as Davis gets a nice roll down to Brett McKnight, but he lost it as he was going up for that shot. So out on the floor, first for the Condors, number zero, A.J. Davis, number 23, Brett McKnight, seven, Richie Gordon, 24, Todd Brow Jr., and number five, Boo Osborne. And out there for Owensboro, we have uh, number three, Matthew Hart, number four, Corey Wilford, number 12, Meshack Lufile, uh, looks like number 11, Evan Milligan, and number nine, Chuck Ogbato. Got a little Golden State uniform look for Owensboro a little bit. Hey, look good, feel good, play good. As uh, Agbado is able to get that offensive rebound and put that one in. Good shot by Agbado. Boo Osborne finds Brett McKnight for the three. That one comes up just short. Matthew Hart with the board, quickly up ahead to Milligan, who then gives it back to Hart. Nice screen there by Agbado. Hart gets it over to Wilford. He'll take the mid-range jumper just strong. I think if, you know, just looking at it, he took that shot a little bit too quick. I think he could have found a better shot. And here in this uh, semi-pro basketball game, they do have 24-second shot clocks. Mm. And we have a uh, official timeout. Oh, well, it looks like there's going to be a foul called on number 12, Meshack Lufile. Everyone looks a little confused right now. Oh, maybe a def defense of three seconds call as uh, Todd Brown is taking what looks to be some technical free throws. I hear you mention this Cordell Ballard, the head coach for the uh, Condors. Cordell Ballard is the head coach for the Columbus Condors. Actually went to school with his brother, Sean Ballard. We went to middle school together. Okay. Yeah, Cordell Ballard, uh, one of the, I believe, finders of this Columbus Condors team, uh, does a lot of good things uh, with uh, uh, training youth here in this United Sports Complex. So very involved in the basketball community. Oh, yeah. I remember him definitely. He was a stand out from Mifflin High School. Um, great, great, great player. Great local, great player. Nice find there by A.J. Davis. Gets it over to Boo Osborne. Gets to the contact and will go to the line for the and one. And just by looking at it right now, it looks like the Condors have a lot of size. I, I definitely see the, um, the size that uh, the Owensboro Thoroughbreds have with uh, Lou Fowl down low, but other than that, I mean, you can just tell that the Condors have a lot of size over Owensboro. Yes, they do. Lou Fowl coming in at 6'8", and Agbado at 6'10". Osborne at the line will convert the and one. Owensboro comes the other way. Hart with the ball. Gets it over to Milligan. Lufile finds Wilford. Wilford trying to find a lane. Good defense there by A.J. Davis. Oh, and great defense there by Boo Osborne as he's able to get a hand in the passing lane. 
Looks like Lufau was taking his, his defender out at the top of the key mm -hmm. as they can look for something down low for uh, for the thoroughbreds because, like I said, that height is just so much of an advantage for the Gondor. Five seconds on the shot clock here. Down to two. Wilford will take the shot, and he'll make it right as the clock expires. Good-looking shot. shot there by Wilford. Great shot for the thoroughbred. This coach Ballard was upset with that shot. It was some good defense, but what looked to be better offense as A.J. Davis gets inside. A, a, a late whistle is going to be called on Wilford. And... Uh, He's wondering why the ref all the way on the outside made the call and not the referee under the basket. But nonetheless, A.J. Davis will go to the line and shoot two. A.J. Davis, the former James Madison player. Uh, I remember him in the tournament a few years ago, and I think they upset Iowa. I'm not for sure, but him and Devon Moore, a Northland graduate, uh, mm -hmm. upset somebody in the NCAA tournament. I want to say it was Iowa. I wish I could look that up. And it's always nice to see uh, players like that who have made a name for themselves at the collegiate level. Then they come here, play for a, a team in the Columbus area. As Richie Gordon's able to get that offensive rebound. It looks like Brett McKnight was ready for the shot. And the ref over here at midcourt is explaining the situation that happened. I couldn't hear what happened from up here, but the Columbus Condors will keep the ball as they have a seven to five lead with 9.30 left here to play in the first. Richie Gordon will take the long range shot, can't convert on that one. Wilford passes it over to Milligan, trying to find Agbato. Good defense there by, uh, by Gordon, but Agbato with the better offense, he's able to get that one to fall. Great shot by Agbato, just to, to get that shot over a guy that tall, that six foot 10 guy, great shot. Todd Brown, he'll take the three, just rattles in and out. Milligan with the board, come, brings it the other way for Owensboro. Wilford with a step back three, and he gets that one to fall. Two good looking threes by, here by Wilford to start off this first quarter. Great three-point shot step back by Wilford. It's like we're living in a, in a step back three-point <laughs> shot world now. And with that three-pointer, Owensboro takes the lead 10 to seven. Osborne with the ball. He'll look for a three of his own. That one comes up just short. For Columbus, doesn't look like a whole lot of, of ball movement here for their for the offensive side for the Condors. A lot of isolation ball, a lot of one-on-one -on -one going on. Brett McKnight going up against Lufile. Great defense there by McKnight. As he gets the steal, brings it the other way. He's just going to take it all the way. Takes the contact. No call, though. Here comes Wilford. He'll kick it over to Hart. Hart will just take it all the way. Good take by Matthew Hart. Todd Brown with the ball. He'll pass it over to McKnight. Passes it up to Davis, and he'll set up the offense here. 10 seconds on the shot clock. And looks like we're going to get an offensive foul here on Brett McKnight. An illegal screen, I do believe. Yes, that's what I was getting ready to say. I think it was a legal screen. Looks like the players thought that there was going to be a media timeout, but I don't believe uh, that the time limit has been reached for that. He just come in, uh, Aaron Jackson has just came in, 6'7", 204-pound uh, forward from Akron, uh, Gahanna native. And uh, looks like Owensboro will keep their same five out on the floor. said Aaron Jackson checking in for A.J. Davis, giving him a breather. 12 to seven lead for Owensboro, 7.35 left here in the first. Wilford and Dogbato then quickly back to Wilford. A little bit of a heat check. 
And it looks like Brett McKnight is gonna get called on that one. So Brett McKnight picks up two quick fouls. As you see Agobado screaming, I'm here, I'm here. He's grabbing rebounds. He is ready to play today. And he, uh, it, it, you've seen Agobado. He is, uh, he has been pumped up since the game, since the time this game started. <laughs> Earlier, he had Richie Gordon on him, and he wanted to go up against him. Gordon had good defense, but Ogbato had some better offense. As uh, Wilford, looking at his hand, doesn't know how that ball missed everything. And you know that's the type <laughs> of energy that you need in these games. You know, not, not a lot of fans, not a lot of nothing going and on, but you need that energy from somebody to get yeah. you going. And you see. Uh, Richie Gordon and Lou File going uh, going at it right now as Gordon's able to get the best of Lou File and connect on that one. Gordon and Lou File going at it on one end, and it looks like uh, Brett McKnight and Ogbato are having some words down here on the other end. <laughs> and that's what's so fun about these games. Like this is it is kind of like a small environment, but me personally, I always liked how you can hear uh, what the players are saying with each other and how they're able to talk smack. It's competitive, but they have fun at the same time too as uh, Matthew Hart steps out of bounds and will come the other way for the Condors. Exactly. Nothing like seeing a little chippiness going on. As long as it doesn't go any further than that, I, I, I love to see it. And with our first timeout of the game, the Owensboro Thoroughbreds will have a 12 to nine lead over the Columbus Condors coming out of this break. And Randall, we talked about it a little bit earlier. Uh, it seems like on the offensive end that the Condors have just kind of been playing some isolation ball. Yeah, that's what it looks like. Um, not a lot of passing going on. And I think that's what the timeout is for. Coach Ballard wants to talk to them about getting that ball, moving that ball around a little bit more, getting some good shots, looking for the best shot available. I don't think they're looking for that right now. And on the other end for Owensboro, for Owensboro uh, we talked about Agbato, he's one of those players that you just like to have that kind of intensity on your team to be able to give your team that positive energy that they need. But Corey Wilford with a couple good looking threes here to help give them this 12 to nine lead. Yeah, they're looking great right now. Um, you know, like I said, like you said, with Agbato playing with his intensity, Wilford taking some good shots. I mean, I, I don't know what more you could ask for this early in the game. They're coming out and they're, they're looking hot. They're looking motivated and they're looking ready to play this game. As I had stated earlier, Owensboro defeated the Dayton Flight yesterday uh, by a score of 128 to 121. So they're feeling good coming off of a win. And the Condors last played on Friday, their first game of the season, uh, losing to the India Express 115 to 105. So as we said, this is the first home game for Columbus. So they're looking to get a win here on their home court. Can't wait to see what all the rest of these teams look like in the league. I, I can't wait. It's going to be these two teams in the basketball league. As Boo Osborne gets it down to Richie Gordon, who then kicks it out. Nice kick out to Boo Osborne. Osborne will end up taking it, then pass back to Gordon. Gordon will take the mid-range jumper. A nice little shot there by Gordon. As him and Osborne had a nice two-man game. And like, you know, we just talked about it, the isolation ball. They got that ball out, made the good pass for the open shot. Best shot available. Wilford gets it down to Agbato. Brett McKnight going up against him. Nice kiss off the glass there by Agbato. Agbato came ready to play today. And you know, I, I, I've seen Brett McKnight as he shoots the three and knocks that one down. Brett McKnight is always the one. He, he's always one to uh, to bring that same kind of energy back. He takes on the challenge. If a player is feeling himself, he will take on that challenge to try and stop him. Oh, yeah. Brett McKnight will not shy down from anybody. And uh, Brett McKnight, only a... Uh, Brett McKnight, only 6'6", going up against the 6'10", Agbato, but he plays bigger than 6'6", as Aaron Jackson's able to knock down that nice little fadeaway. Good jump shot from Aaron Jackson. Kind of had the Kobe Bryant one leg up in the air shot going on. It's kind of funny to see uh, Brett McKnight out there on the top of the key when, when he played for the Bruins, he was their big man. He, he was he, the he, one that played down low. Yes, he was. But now with the likes of uh, Richie Gordon at 6'10", uh, uh, Aaron Jackson at 6'7", and uh, 
They have another guy. Uh, yeah, Aaron Jackson at 6'7". A.J. Stewart also, who uh, is also around that 6'10 range. It's nice when, uh, you know, you can have some of those other big guys and Brett McKnight. Not only can he play as the big man down low, but he can shoot outside as well. Exactly. And that's what you need from a team like this. Um, shooters, passers, rebounders. you got to have it all this day. We see uh, Khalil McCormick, number 12 for the Condors, checking in for uh, McKnight and giving him a break. And nice hands there by Jalen Benton. He's, he's able to knock that one out. And if my eyes do deceive me, it looks like uh, Jalen Benton is playing with a mask on. It looks like he is. I'm not for sure. If, uh, I guess you can do that in this COVID uh, time right now. I've never seen it. I have not seen it either. But Jalen Benton will take it all the way and get his first two points of the game. Shot by Jalen Benton. Yeah, I, I, you know, when COVID first started, I thought maybe you would see more players with masks on. But, right. And I know it would be probably kind of hard to breathe. Maybe he has some type of breathing holes in his uh, mask or something like that. Well, nonetheless, that didn't stop him from uh, getting his first two points of the game. Wilford kicks it over to Milligan. As Agbato's trying to post up down low, but Aaron Jackson with a good defensive post. Post defense. You can see Aaron Jackson front knock Bado off the oh, way. And great passing there. Jalen Ben up ahead to Richie Gordon, who then dishes it off to, Jack, to uh, McCormick. I think that timeout that Coach Ballard took was just what they needed. If you can see, they came out of that timeout making some extra passes, making the best pass available and getting some good shots. And uh, alongside with that, Columbus Condors, they do have a lot of speed. So as we just seen a couple of these possessions here uh, during that last stint of play, uh, they like to move the ball up the floor fast. Yeah, they're definitely moving the ball before. They have a lot of athletes, so I expect to see them moving the ball. Just can't get in those situations where they're just playing isolation ball because some in, no, in times like that, you're just not going to get the best shot available. And, you know, as you can see in transitional ball, they're doing great. Yeah, and since that last time out, the Condors have been on an 11-2 run as the Condors have a 20 to 14 lead now. Originally that last time out, they were down 12 to nine. Just under four minutes left to play here in the first quarter at 355. Be on the lookout, and, and, and I'm, I, I can't, I'm not a mind reader, I can't predict <laughs> this, but just by looking at it, it looks like the Condors have more depth than the thoroughbred. So I haven't seen Agbado come out at all. I know he was talking a lot. It takes a lot of energy when you're talking. Mm -hmm. And uh, just be on the lookout to see as the game goes. If that how, plays a factor. If that plays a big factor, which oh, I believe it will. Owensboro uh, does not have Hunter Knopfsinger or Michael Davenport today. But yes, as you're right, as you were saying, that uh, the depth does look like it could cause issues here if uh, the Condors can play this correctly. Hart gets it down to Lou Fowl, Gordon guarding him. Lou Fowl loses it for a second. Some people wanted some uh, a double dribble possibly. And that's uh, Donovan Griffith checking in here for Owensboro. Couldn't get that board. A.J. Davis quickly comes the other way for the Condors. Kicks it over to Benton. Benton thought about a three. Skip pass over to McCormick. I think the thoroughbred is really trying to get uh, Lou Fowl involved in this game. AJ, AJ Davis just short on that three. Yes, Lou Fio and Ogbato. They're two big men on this roster for Owensboro as Lou Fio checks out now alongside Wilford. Checking in is Javion Eves and uh, Cameron Moore. Nice move there by A.J. Jackson, but looks like uh, Aaron Jackson is going to get called for the offensive hook. Last time I seen Aaron Jackson at Gahanna, he was a little thicker. He's lost a lot of weight. Uh, he look, looks like he's in better shape now. He can move a little better than what he did. Um, that just comes along with time. Aaron Jackson coming in at 6'7", 204. 3.01 left to play. Score still 20 to 14. Columbus Condors on top of Owensboro. Hart will bring the ball up the floor for the thoroughbreds. Oh, and 
Brett McKnight with a nice hustle play, though. Luckily, that wasn't anything serious. I think that floor is a little wet out there. I've been seeing some players slipping on the ground. That won't be any excuse for Brett McKnight, though, as he's one of the best hustlers I've ever seen. Oh, yeah. Oh, and... Looks like Jalen Bitten is going to get called for that foul. Looked like he had both hands up trying to come around that screen, but nonetheless. And it looks like a possible, some kind of technical foul as Hart will go to the line and shoot one. Not for sure if that technical foul was on McKnight. Um, I didn't see it as I'm watching from the screen. They didn't have the actual camera on mm -hmm. McKnight at the time, so I'm not for sure what that foul was. Look for them to do the same play here. Benton thought he should have had that steal, but Hurt passes it over to Eves. Eves looking for a shot, passes down to Ogbato. Ogbato will take a step back, and that one comes up just short. Davis there with the defensive rebound. Quickly up ahead. Tipped by uh, Griffith, but couldn't end up getting the turnover. Ball ends up in ben Benton's hand. I don't think that was a good shot by Agbato at the other end of the court. And it looks like we're going to get another defensive three seconds. That one on is going to be uh, Agbato guilty of that one. Benton goes and knocks that one down. Uh, Darius Nunn checks in for Owensboro and gives Matthew Hart a breather. Twenty-one to fifteen lead here, two thirty, two twenty-eight actually remaining here in this first quarter. Davis to inbound to Jackson. Jackson looking to make something happen. Who ends up finding Benton, who's able to get that one with the. Uh, with the shorter nun on him, and Ben gives Ogbato a little taste of his own med medicine, putting his hand down to the floor. Good, great pass by Jackson. Find him down low. Davis kicks it over to McCormick. McCormick will take the three. That one comes up just short, but Jackson's there for the board. Ends up in McKnight's hands. Kicks it over to Davis. Davis looking to take the smaller nun into the post, and McCormick comes in and says Ogbato was straight up, so no foul there, and quickly the other way comes Owensboro, but good defense there by Aaron Jackson to be able to knock that one out. As Cameron Moore was trying to go up for that shot, Aaron Jackson with the quick hands, not giving up anything easy. Moore with the ball, gives it over to Eves. Passes it over to Nunn. None's going to take a step back three. That one's just too strong. Agbato with the offensive board. Great rebound by Agbato. Eves with the floaters, able to get that one to fall. Nice little running floater there by <laughs> JB on Eves. Great floater. With that cuts the lead to six. 23-17 lead here for the Condors. Just over a minute left in this first quarter. Oh, a nice little spin move by Benton as couldn't get it to fall. And none got him on the arm as he was going up for that one. So Jalen Benton will go to the line and shoot two for the Condors here. It was a great spin. I think he just went up a little bit too fast and it didn't fall, but he got fouled on that. And that possibly could have been the reason as well. Benton's first shot is up and that one ends up falling. 6'2", 185 guard out of Youngstown State University. Providing good minutes off the bench so far here in this first quarter. Knocks down the second one. 25-17 lead now for the Condors. One minute left to play. Nunn kicks it over to Eves. Griffith will come and set the screen. Jackson guarding Eves as Eves can't get that mid-range jumper to fall. Ogbato, though, with four bodies around him, is able to get that offensive board. I'm sorry, that was not Ogbato. That was uh, Cameron Moore. Definitely was Cameron Moore. 
Good job by Moore not to give up on the play. As, as I said, there was three or four white jerseys around him, and he was still able to get up and get the offensive rebound. Uh, and maybe not a foul, maybe a possible jump ball situation, as that's what we're looks yeah. like everyone is lining up for. Yeah, that's what it looks like, a jump ball. I've seen Coach Ballard throwing his hands up as a jump ball. And Moore won that one, but McKnight the other way is good defense there by Ogbato to contest that, but Jalen Benton once again. Jalen Benton is finishing around the bucket. Yes. Benton, the 6-2, is going up against, however, the 5-9, Darius Nunn. 27-17 lead here, 20 seconds left, 17 on the shot clock, though. So the Condors will hold for, you know, at least the last shot. Maybe four or five seconds left will be on the game clock by the time this shot goes up. McKnight will take that all the way. Couldn't get it to finish. Aaron Jackson tried getting the offensive board. Here comes Griffith the other way for Owensboro. Throws it up ahead for Javion, e uh, Javion Eves. And great find there by uh, Griffith. Great find by Griffin. That was a great alley-oop pass and transition. Great first quarter we've seen. It was an exciting first quarter as the Condors will get out of this first one with a lead of 27 to 19. And it looks like after the first uh, couple minutes at the Columbus Condors ended, ended up settling down, uh, as we said in the beginning, a little bit of too much isolation. And, 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 and in these games, it is a lot of feeling out the other team those first couple minutes. Yeah, it started out like that. It looked like, you know, both teams are just, you know, getting a feel of each other. And like you said, it starts out like that. But once the Condors got settled down and got into their rhythm, start making good passes, um, they, they looked they look pretty good. So I'm looking for the second quarter to be the same way. Looked like the um, Thoroughbreds kind of got um, a little tired in the first half. Yeah. So we will go ahead and take a short break, and when we come back, we will get ready for the second quarter. This is T-Bell Basketball here on the Score On Air Network. Can you see yourself working on TV, radio, or social media? As media professionals, we make our voice heard. Call the Ohio Media School and be a part of something bigger than you and me. You'll train and get the skills you need to work in TV, radio, social media, film, and much more. I graduated and now am working as a director of marketing at a local radio station. My future is set. Call the Ohio Media School now and be a part of something bigger. 614-723-9675. Back here at the United Sports Center where the Columbus Condors are taking on the Owensboro Thoroughbreds and they have a 27-19 lead here at the start of this second quarter said Donahoe alongside Randall Smith and Randall it was a good first quarter and Columbus quickly comes out here in the second quarter. Yeah, yes, come back first quarter was great. Uh, great, great steal by McKnight to take it all the way from court to court, coast to coast and make that layup shot. Cameron Moore got it a little bit too contested. He ended up forcing that one over and Brett McKnight and Richie Gordon not quite on the same page and it looks like Gordon might have got a little bit of a stinger in the back as he's down on the other baseline. Zach Bado put in the tip-in shot. Yeah, it looked like uh, when McKnight was trying to feed that ball to Richie Gordon, somebody had come in from behind and maybe got him in the tailbone or something. He's a little shaken up, but it looks like Gordon will stay out there. That's a good thing. Just a little shaking up. Uh, but at the same time, if he needs to come out, they have the players to bring him out. Correct. But Coach Ballard and Richie Gordon agree to disagree, maybe, as Richie will stay out there. 29 to 21 lead here for the Condors. Todd Brown with the ball, kicks it over to Brett McKnight. McKnight finds a lane. He'll take it all the way. Just couldn't get that left hand layup to fall. Good defense there by Osborne as he almost picked up the steal. Donovan Griffith there with a good looking three to 
Give a little bit of a momentum switch to Owensboro here. Definitely a momentum switch. I was getting ready to say none. Looked like he was out of control for a minute, but he made the, made the great pass and made the shot. Ball kicks down to Todd Brown. Good defense there by Griffith for the help. He'll kick it back out to A.J. Davis. A.J. will take a nice little Euro step all the way, and he'll get fouled by Meshach Lufile. Great Euro step by A.J. Davis. It looks like that, that Euro step, everybody has added that to their game right now, and it's, it's, it's working effectively. And it's always so beautiful when you can convert on it, and A.J. Davis, when he made that move, made it look so smooth. Just imagine some of these guys in the NBA that are 6'7", 6'8", 6'9", making that Euro step. Look at a guy like James Harden who's 6'7", 6'8", and he does it so efficiently and so well all the time. A.J. Davis can't connect on the first one. Second one is up and knocks that one in. Gives the Condors a 30 to 24 lead. 10-21 left in the first, or in the second, excuse me. None with the ball for Owensboro. Looking for Eves. Ends up giving it to him. And another Euro step there by Eves. Couldn't get that one to fall. McKnight's there for the offensive, or for the defensive rebound. Eves made a little body contact. I think he might have thought he was going to get called for the foul. Uh, mm -hmm. with the foul. I actually thought the foul was going to be called as well, but the ref didn't call it. And that is one of the things about this uh, the basketball league is it's not your normal you know pickup game. These are semi-pro teams, and it is very physical, and not too much will be called unless it is deemed necessary. I've noticed. <laughs> so Jalen Hearn checks in for the Condors. He's the one with the ball at the top of the key right now. Great A.J. Pass. Davis, great play there, set, set up and executed perfectly by the Condors. Great pass by Jalen Hearn coming right in off the bench, making that pass to A.J. Davis. It looked like they were going to try and get the, get the ball to McKnight for the three. Instead, A.J. Davis ended up slipping, and he gets that one. Cameron Moore takes it to the hole for Owensboro, can't get it to fall. Todd Brown with the ball, good defense there by Eves. Looks like Richie Ju Gordon is slow to get up again. Yeah, it looked like Richie Gordon was kind of, he was kind of winching his back a little bit a couple times down the floor before. I think Coach Ballard needs to get him out and get him a little bit of rest. He picks it over to uh, Mishag Lufayo, who then gets fouled, and he'll go to the line for his and one opportunity. Yeah, it looks like A.J. Stewart is going to be checking in here for the Condors and yeah, Richie Gordon will get a little break. That's a couple times he's gotten shaken up, especially here within the first three minutes of the second quarter. Yeah, and you come in, you come in with uh, McCormick, and you're not, it's, it's not a whole bunch of size uh, difference between those guys. Where well, AJ Stewart, I'm sorry, come in with Stewart, and, and they're going to go to uh, probably provide pretty much the same type of game for the Condors. Lou File was able to convert on his and one. 32-27 for the Condors. Just over nine minutes left to play here in the second. A.J. Davis handling the ball. Kicks it over to Hearn. Screen set there by McKnight. McKnight will end up taking that one. Pump fake gets it over to Todd Brown. Todd Brown will take the long three, but his foot was on the out-of-bounce line. As that turnover will go Owensboro's way. Yeah, I don't think he noticed that uh, his foot was, was out a little bit and the uh, ball's going the other way. Aaron Jackson, nope, not checking in yet. The ref says no, not yet. Hearn guarding none, full court. Good ball handling there by none. Hearn staying with him the whole way though. Cameron Smith will end up taking the three and he'll get that one to fall. Good looking shot there by yeah, Cameron uh, Moore. Great shot by Moore. If, you, if you've noticed when uh, Darius Nunn has been in the game, he's kind of got that flow going. He's kind of being that floor general that you need out of a point guard. And as you can tell, they're starting to come back and make a run at this. Nice uh, little floater there by Todd Brown as he's able to get that one to fall. Owensboro the other way. Hearn all getting on the floor. 
And as Hearn was going to the ground, looks like Lufile was going to get called for the foul. Saying that he pulled his arm down as Jalen Hearn had the ball. Lou Fowl just hasn't been able to get going, and they've been looking for him the whole first half. He's had a couple uh, a couple layup opportunities that he's made, a couple baskets, but just hasn't had him fall. Huh? And I believe a three-second violation going to be called on offense this time. That one's going to go against Todd Brown. So costly turnover is this is only a four-point game now. Still eight minutes left, but the Condors with a 34-30 uh, to 30 lead early in the second. You can kind of see a momentum change with the thoroughbreds right now. Just looks like they're in control as he takes this shot in the corner and misses. Yeah, Darius Nunn creating opportunities, bobbing and weaving through the defense, getting looks for open guys as a, that was Donovan Griffith who couldn't knock down that three. Todd Brown kicks it over to Hearn. Hearn will end up taking that three. Gets that one to fall. Great shot by Hearns coming off the bench doing some good things. JB on Eves with the ball right now for the thoroughbreds. He'll end up pulling up and taking the three, and he'll get that one to fall. A couple, three here, couple threes here by JV on Eves as he keeps this game to within four. Great shot by JV on Eves. He's, he's doing what he can do out there, that three-point shot. And that foul is going to go against JV on Eves as he was holding, uh, I believe that was Todd Brown as he was trying to drive for the basket. Looks like we have mass substitutions coming in for the uh, thoroughbreds right now. Yes, uh, Agbato, Milligan, Hart, and uh, Wilford will be checking in. Lufile will stay out there, though. Todd Brown with the ball at the top of the key. He'll end up pulling up her three. Just gets it off the... Front edge of the rim, it can't get it to fall. Milligan comes the other way. Trying to find Agbato, they do. Aaron Jackson with the defense, good straight up defense. And Agbato, once again, has, has his kind of smack talking. <laughs> He's out there smack talking. <laughs> he has a lot of size, man, a lot of energy down there. I just don't know if Aaron Jackson is big enough to guard him down low like that. Todd Brown ends up driving, kicks, and kicks it out to Jackson. That one's just too strong. Hart comes the other way for Owensboro. Looks like they're trying to set up the same thing again. Instead, Wilford will end up taking the three on the other side. And Agbato is going to get called for the foul. As Agbato's not happy with that, he thought Aaron Jackson might have sold it a little bit. I would like to see how many fouls Agbato has as he looks like he's maybe called with a technical foul. No, there was a timeout. Yes, media timeout. I believe he, I don't think he has very many. One, maybe two. Um, however, there have not been very many fouls called here in this game. As uh, we had stated earlier, it is a uh, usually a pretty physical league um, and not too much will get fouled. But there is a media timeout, 37 to 35, Condors lead over Owensboro. And as we'd said in the first quarter, the game had kind of started off a little bit slow. Condors ended up getting some of that momentum. They uh, eventually went on an 11 to two run, which gave them a 20 to 14 lead. But now it is uh, only a two point lead here for the Condors. And, and you know, they went kind of, um, you know, the Condors have not made a lot of shots this second quarter, but to still be up by two points, it says a lot about this team. It looks like uh, Owensboro is, you know, trying to find their big man. Uh, obviously, Agbato is confident in his game, and so is uh, head coach Mark Anderson. They've been trying to find him a little bit of loo file down below. And, you know, when you're able to create those kind of opportunities, then that opens up the kick out for the three, Most which definitely. we've seen Wilford make a couple. Uh, Eves has made a couple as well. So they're executing, uh, you know, to their game plan well. 
And as I said, they're only down two right now, halfway through the second quarter. Yeah, I would like to see um, more of Nunn and Hart on the court at the same time for the um, thoroughbreds, just to see like how, how it will work with two point guards out there. So with that foul down here on the other end, Aaron Jackson will go to the line and shoot two as he knocks in the first one. Aaron Jackson providing some solid minutes off of the bench as he knocks down two of two. Gives the Condors a four point lead here halfway through the second. 39-35, Hart kicks it over to Wilford. Kicks it down to Lou Fio. AJ Stewart's there defending him. But I believe the size of uh, Lou Fio there was able to overpower AJ Stewart. Good take by Lou Fio. Maybe he can get going in this game. Looks like Agbado's getting into it with everybody on the Condors team. <laughs> Got a lot of intensity. Yes, uh, A.J. Davis is going to end up picking up that foul. A legal screen, I think it was. And as you had said, Ogbato shows no signs of slowing down with his, with his positive energy. <laughs> None at all. And, and I think that's a part of his game. You know, sometimes you got players that, you know, that, that's a part of their game. Right. So it's like, you know, to get players rattled up and try to get them out of their game. When Richie Gordon checks back in and... Of course, they're having a little bit of a conversation. Hart kicks it over to Milligan. Milligan will end up taking up the mid-range jump shot, but can't get that one to fall in as that one rims in and out. A.J. Davis quickly the other way for the Condors. Nice take by him, but couldn't convert on that one with the smaller Hart guarding him. Hart will find Wilford. He'll take that three, and that's a... Uh, I think three threes there for uh, Corey Wilford. Great find by Hart as well. I like the backcourt that the Thoroughbreds have right now with Hart and Nunn. Todd Brown with the ball for the Condors. Passes it over to Gordon at the top of the key. Lou File guarding him. He'll kick it out to Aaron Jackson. Jackson will take a deep three. That one's just short. Last touched by Gordon. And the ball will come the other way to Owensboro. Let's see if, uh, you know, I'm, I'm not for sure of this, but let's see if the thoroughbreds try to make something happen for uh, Lou Fowl down low right here on this offensive Jay possession. Jalen Benton checking in for Todd Brown. And Agbado. Maybe trying to be a little too physical as he uh, displaces Richie Gordon and Ogbato will get called for that offensive foul. And, and you know, one thing about it is, you know, you, it, nobody can hide from in, out here on this basketball court. Right. But when you're somebody who, who who's talking a lot, who's getting chippy a lot, the refs are going to notice you more. Mm -hmm. So they're looking to call that foul if, if you know. A, a, a potential X on your back, if you will. Exactly. Jalen Benton kicks it over to McCormick. Passes it down low to Gordon. Good defense there by Lou File. Milligan was able to get a hand on that one and knock that one out of bounds. Owensboro with a 40-39 lead right now. 4-17 left in the second. Brett McKnight checks back in for the Condors, but there's three seconds left here on the shot clock. See what the Condors can come up with. Then the McKnight. McKnight will end up taking the mid-range jumper. That one's just short. McCormick's there for the offensive rebound. He gets fouled by Hart, and McCormick's able to knock it in and go to the chance, go to the line for a chance at a three-point play. Good look by McCormick just to uh, find that ball right there around that rim and just put it right back in. Can't ask for more. Yeah, if you're a coach, you those are the hustle plays that a coach likes to have from you. Exactly. With that shot, McCormick makes it a 40 to 41 to 40 lead, and with the free throw, puts him up by two. Hart. Hart with the ball kicks it over to Milligan. 
Passes down low to Ogbato. Who else? He kicks it back out to Wilford. Wilford looking for a three. Instead, he'll take a long two and gets that one to fall on Corey Wilford with the hot hand right now for Owensboro. Good shot by Corey Wilford. And a great pass there by Jalen Benton as he throws it right on the money to A.J. Benton, or A.J. Davis, excuse me. And as you can see, Wilford tried to get up and get that ball, but it was, you know, it was a great, it was a great pass down low to get him right there on the money. Oh, and they wanted to carry, but instead, since that didn't happen, Richie Gordon says no, swats that one. Benton will end up taking the three just off the mark on that one. Blue file gets the board. Matt Hart bringing it up the floor, setting it up for the Thoroughbreds. Trying to find a lane. Kicks it up ahead to Milligan. Screen set by Ogbato. And they're going to get Khalil McCormick with a hold as Ogbato was setting that screen. Yeah, he was setting that screen to get that pass down low. And as you can tell, it looked like he had beat him, so he made that. I, I can mm -hmm. I can see that foul that went on right there. Yeah, as you said, uh, it looked like uh, Agbato was going to have that pick and roll set up perfectly. So instead, McCormick ends up holding him. McKnight all up in Wilford's grill. And... Uh, and uh, a traveling violation going to be called on Corey Wilford. Wilford not happy with the call. So instead, it'll go to the Condors with a 44-42 lead. 250 left here in the second. Davis gets the ball from Osborne. McKnight comes for the screen. Davis kicked it down to McCormick. And last touched by Owensboro, I believe, is there's going to be a, a timeout called here. I believe it was last touched by Owensboro. So going into this timeout, 240 left here in the first half, 44 to 42 lead for the Condors. Uh, Randall, if you're if you're both of these teams, what what do you do in order to get um, the momentum swing into your possession heading into the half? Well, for for the uh, the Condors, it just looks like they were like maybe get to tell of two quarters where they wasn't actually making a lot of good shots. Um, in the beginning of the first quarter, and then they kind of mm -hmm. settled down and got a rhythm going. Mm -hmm. They haven't really had a rhythm going this second quarter, um, so they got to get that rhythm back. Okay. Um, for the thoroughbreds, just kind of keep doing what they're doing. You got none, and you got hard dishing that ball out, looking for good shots. Keep penetrating. Yeah, so with the thoroughbreds, they're, they're, you know, they're doing fine. Just got to keep doing what they were doing, and um, we'll see how this, this first half finishes. So as I said, 2.40 left here. Condors with a 44-42 to 42 lead. Ball is inbounded to McKnight. He'll take the three, and he'll knock that three down. Good-looking shot there by McKnight. And a technical foul. is going to be called on McKnight, probably a little pumped up after he made that three. <laughs> and, and, and as you can see, uh, you know, that, like I was talking a little bit earlier, mm -hmm. that could be coming from the trash talk that Agbato was given. Oh, yeah. And now it's kind of like, well, I gave it to him. Well, we don't know who the technical foul is on right now. Well, it looks like it is on McKnight. Richie Gordon heading to uh, towards the Owensboro bench. I'll tell you, it, it is always fun to watch Brett McKnight and uh, Richie Gordon as right. they do have their own kind of forms of trash talking, but they both still continue to play. They're both competitive players. As, as we've seen, Ogbato, he is a, a, a similar player to that point. And as, as you mentioned, it's just in some of their, in, it's just part of some of their games. Right. And as you can see, it kind of play right into Ogbato's hands with that technical on Brett McKnight. So Hart with the ball, he'll end up giving it to Ogbato. Passes it over to Wilford. Yeah. 
Hurt kicks it back over to Wilford. Wilford looking for a step back three. Good defense though there by McKnight. He's able to block that. McKnight passes up ahead to Boo Osborne and because Hurt was in the way, he will send Boo Osborne to the line for a chance at an end run. Great pass by McKnight. And McKnight still continuing. As you can and see, Coach uh, Ballard tells him to stop talking and just play the game. He has one technical, one more technical, mm -hmm. he's out of there. And uh, to, uh, to an extent, Coach Ballard is just uh, trying to keep McKnight calm and cool and just let his game do the talking, if you will, as Osborne couldn't convert on that free throw. Darius Nunn with the ball, kicks it over to Wilford. Wilford passes down low to Lou File. And the traveling violation, both refs were getting ready to call it, so Lou File just shuffled his feet and turns it over to the Condors with 150 left here in the second, because they have a 49 to 43 lead. As we go into this, uh, get ready to be halftime, there's a lot of chipping, a lot of talking going on out there right now. A.J. Davis just couldn't quite finish that dunk. Wilford quickly up ahead the other way. And McKnight is going to get called for the foul, even though it looked like Wilford had leaned into him. Still, nonetheless, Wilford will go to the line and try his chance for a three-point play. He definitely leaned into him. I'm not for sure, but I don't know if McKnight would have had to have had his body planted on the ground to get that call for him, but Wilford was definitely leaning his body into McKnight. Wilford at the line, converts on the end one. Forty-nine, forty-six lead here for the Condors. One thirty left to play. Right now in this second quarter, it's been a lot of uh, back and forth between both of these teams scoring and you know keeping it close as Lou File is able to knock that one away from Gordon. None comes the other way for Owensboro. Nice behind the back. Ogbato ends up with it. Passes it over to Evan Milligan. Ogbato wants the ball again. Down low. None. Lou File. Kicks it back out to None. None thought about a three. Then he'll end up taking it. And just in and out. And Ogbato couldn't get a hand on it. As that was last touch by him. And it'll go to the Condors with just under a minute to play here in this second. Three point lead for the Condors. Forty-nine to forty-six. Ref cleaning off the ball a little bit. Now we're ready to play. Kind of surprised to see A.J. Davis bringing the ball up the court. He's been doing that the whole game. I wasn't for sure that he was the actual point guard for the team. He ends up getting none on him, then gives it to a cutting McCormick, who then passes it to a cutting Jackson. And with two hands right around him, he's still able to finish that. And that's the type of ball moving you have to see in these games. That's what has worked for the Condors so far in this first half. Milligan with the ball over to Nunn and over to Wilford with the hot hand. That one's just too strong. 26 seconds left. Condors with a five-point lead. Looks like the Condors are going to play for one final shot. Didn't know if they would maybe go for one and try to get another, another one in, but... Looks like they're playing for one shot. About a two second differential between the game clock and the shot clock. Eight seconds left on the shot clock. Osborne with the ball, passes it. Down low to A.J. Davis, but A.J. Davis couldn't get his feet established as that one goes out of bounds. And with six seconds left, Owensboro will try and cut into this deficit before the half. Lou File gets it into none. K 
kicks it over to Wilford. Wilford will take a three right before the half. That one's off. Got a good and shot off. Yes, they did. They got the shot that they were looking for, just couldn't get it to fall. And with that, after one half, the Columbus Condors have a 51 to 46 lead over the Owensboro Thoroughbreds. And as we, uh, as you had mentioned, Randall, when the Condors are able to start moving the ball, they get a lot of those opportunities that they've been able to score on. Yeah, and, and you know, that's the thing about it. If you can get those good shots, get good possessions, don't turn over the ball, good things are going to happen for you. And for Owensboro, they have been, they haven't really missed too many shots. They are, the shots that they are getting, you know, they are running their game plan effectively, able to convert on uh, on said game plan and I mean with that it's only a five point game. Yeah, um, Owensboro kind of finished the second half kind of sloppy. They started out the second half real good. Mm -hmm. I mean the second quarter, I'm sorry. Mm -hmm. But um yeah, it's just been going back and forth and um I think if 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 the if the, if the thoroughbreds can come out and get back to what they were doing early in the second quarter, they'll be just fine. Now with the Condors, uh, if they can keep it going right now because they kind of got it going, passing the ball, getting in transition, making good defensive plays, uh, see some good things out of them as well. So can't wait to see this second half. Yes, it should be a very interesting second half. As I said here, after the first half, the Condors have a 51 to 46 lead over the Owensboro Thoroughbreds. We will go ahead and take a break and be back for the second half. This is TBL basketball here on the Score on Air Network. Have you always dreamed about a career in sports broadcasting but aren't sure where to begin? Well, if so, then look no further than the Sports Emphasis Program at The Ohio Media School. Whether in front of the camera, on the microphone, or behind the scenes, you'll learn from a pro to be a pro in the Sports Emphasis Program at The Ohio Media School. You'll get hands-on training and live in-the-field experience at some of Ohio's biggest sporting events. You'll be the star of your very own webcast, and you'll get the opportunity to interview some of Ohio's biggest athletes. Call us today at 614-655-5250 or visit our website at beonair.com. Can you see yourself working on TV, radio, or social media? As media professionals, we make our voice heard. Call the Ohio Media School and be a part of something bigger than you and me. You'll train and get the skills you need to work in TV, radio, social media, film, and much more. I graduated and now am working as a director of marketing at a local radio station. My future is set. Call the Ohio Media School now and be a part of something bigger. 614 Have you always dreamed about a career in sports broadcasting but aren't sure where to begin? Well, if so, then look no further than the Sports Emphasis Program at The Ohio Media School. Whether in front of the camera, on the microphone, or behind the scenes, you'll learn from a pro to be a pro in the Sports Emphasis Program at The Ohio Media School. You'll get hands-on training and live in-the-field experience at some of Ohio's biggest sporting events. You'll be the star of your very own webcast, and you'll get the opportunity to interview some of Ohio's biggest athletes. Call us today at 614-655-5250 or visit our website at beonair.com. Can you see yourself working on TV, radio, or social media? As media professionals, we make our voice heard. Call the Ohio Media School and be a part of something bigger than you and me. You'll train and get the skills you need to work in TV, radio, social media, film, and much more. I graduated and now am working as a director of marketing at a local radio station. My future is set. Call the Ohio Media School now and be a part of something bigger. 614-723-9675. Have you always dreamed about a career in sports broadcasting but aren't sure where to begin? Well, if so, then look no further than the Sports Emphasis Program at The Ohio Media School. Whether in front of the camera, on the microphone, or behind the scenes, you'll learn from a pro to be a pro in the Sports Emphasis Program at The Ohio Media School. You'll get hands-on training and live in-the-field experience at some of Ohio's biggest sporting events. 
you'll be the star of your very own webcast, and you'll get the opportunity to interview some of Ohio's biggest athletes. Call us today at 614-655-5250 or visit our website at beonair.com. Do you see yourself working on TV, radio, or social media? As media professionals, we make our voice heard. Call the Ohio Media School and be a part of something bigger than you and me. You'll train and get the skills you need to work in TV, radio, social media, film, and much more. I graduated and now am working as a director of marketing at a local radio station. My future is set. Call the Ohio Media School now and be a part of something bigger. 614-723-9675. Have you always dreamed about a career in sports broadcasting but aren't sure where to begin? Well, if so, then look no further than the Sports Emphasis Program at the Ohio Media School. Whether in front of the camera, on the microphone, or behind the scenes, you'll learn from a pro to be a pro in the Sports Emphasis Program at the Ohio Media School. You'll get hands-on training and live in-the-field experience at some of Ohio's biggest sporting events. You'll be the star of your very own webcast, and you'll get the opportunity to interview some of Ohio's biggest athletes. Call us today at 614-655-5250 or visit our website at beonair.com. Can you see yourself working on TV, radio, or social media? As media professionals, we make our voice heard. Call the Ohio Media School and be a part of something bigger than you and me. You'll train and get the skills you need to work in TV, radio, social media, film, and much more. I graduated and now am working as a director of marketing at a local radio station. My future is set. Call the Ohio Media School now and be a part of something bigger. 614-723-9675. 614-725-5275. Have you always dreamed about a career in sports broadcasting but aren't sure where to begin? Well, if so, then look no further than the Sports Emphasis Program at the Ohio Media School. Whether in front of the camera, on the microphone, or behind the scenes, you'll learn from a pro to be a pro in the Sports Emphasis Program at the Ohio Media School. You'll get hands-on training and live in-the-field experience at some of Ohio's biggest sporting events. You'll be the star of your very own webcast, and you'll get the opportunity to interview some of Ohio's biggest athletes. Call us today at 614-655-5250 or visit our website at beonair.com. Can you see yourself working on TV, radio, or social media? As media professionals, we make our voice heard. Call the Ohio Media School and be a part of something bigger than you and me. You'll train and get the skills you need to work in TV, radio, social media, film, and much more. I graduated and now am working as a director of marketing at a local radio station. My future is set. Call the Ohio Media School now and be a part of something bigger. 614-723-9675. 614-723-9675. Have you always dreamed about a career in sports broadcasting but aren't sure where to begin? Well, if so, then look no further than the Sports Emphasis Program at the Ohio Media School. Whether in front of the camera, on the microphone, or behind the scenes, you'll learn from a pro to be a pro in the Sports Emphasis Program at the Ohio Media School. You'll get hands-on training and live in-the-field experience at some of Ohio's biggest sporting events. You'll be the star of your very own webcast, and you'll get the opportunity to interview some of Ohio's biggest athletes. Call us today at 614-655-5250 or visit our website at beonair.com. Can you see yourself working on TV, radio, or social media? As media professionals, we make our voice heard. Call the Ohio Media School and be a part of something bigger than you and me. You'll train and get the skills you need to work in TV, radio, social media, film, and much more. I graduated and now am working as a director of marketing at a local radio station. My future is set. Call the Ohio Media School now and be a part of something bigger. 614-723-9675. 614-723-9675.
Have you always dreamed about a career in sports broadcasting but aren't sure where to begin? Well, if so, then look no further than the Sports Emphasis Program at The Ohio Media School. Whether in front of the camera, on the microphone, or behind the scenes, you'll learn from a pro to be a pro in the Sports Emphasis Program at The Ohio Media School. You'll get hands-on training and live in-the-field experience at some of Ohio's biggest sporting events. You'll be the star of your very own webcast, and you'll get the opportunity to interview some of Ohio's biggest athletes. Call us today at 614-655-5250 or visit our website at beonair.com. Can you see yourself working on TV, radio, or social media? As media professionals, we make our voice heard. Call the Ohio Media School and be a part of something bigger than you and me. You'll train and get the skills you need to work in TV, radio, social media, film, and much more. I graduated and now am working as a director of marketing at a local radio station. My future is set. Call the Ohio Media School now and be a part of something bigger. 614-723-9675. 614-723-9675. you always dreamed about a career in sports broadcasting but aren't sure where to begin? Well, if so, then look no further than the Sports Emphasis Program at The Ohio Media School. Whether in front of the camera, on the microphone, or behind the scenes, you'll learn from a pro to be a pro in the Sports Emphasis Program at The Ohio Media School. You'll get hands-on training and live in-the-field experience at some of Ohio's biggest sporting events. You'll be the star of your very own webcast, and you'll get the opportunity to interview some of Ohio's biggest athletes. Call us today at 614-655-5250 or visit our website at beonair.com. Can you see yourself working on TV, radio, or social media? As media professionals, we make our voice heard. Call the Ohio Media School and be a part of something bigger than you and me. You'll train and get the skills you need to work in TV, radio, social media, film, and much more. I graduated and now am working as a director of marketing at a local radio station. My future is set. Call the Ohio Media School now and be a part of something bigger. 614-723-9675. 614-723-9675. Have you always dreamed about a career in sports broadcasting but aren't sure where to begin? Well, if so, then look no further than the Sports Emphasis Program at The Ohio Media School. Whether in front of the camera, on the microphone, or behind the scenes, you'll learn from a pro to be a pro in the Sports Emphasis Program at The Ohio Media School. You'll get hands-on training and live in-the-field experience at some of Ohio's biggest sporting events. You'll be the star of your very own webcast, and you'll get the opportunity to interview some of Ohio's biggest athletes. Call us today at 614-655-5250 or visit our website at beonair.com. Can you see yourself working on TV, radio, or social media? As media professionals, we make our voice heard. Call the Ohio Media School and be a part of something bigger than you and me. You'll train and get the skills you need to work in TV, radio, social media, film, and much more. I graduated and now am working as a director of marketing at a local radio station. My future is set. Call the Ohio Media School now and be a part of something bigger. 614-723-9675. 614-723-9675. Back here at the United Sports Center for today's TBL matchup between the Columbus Condors and the Owensboro Thoroughbreds where Columbus has a 51-46 to lead after the first half of play. Seth Donahoe alongside Randall Smith. And Randall, that was a, an interesting first half that we got to see. It was a great first half that we got to see. Um, there was a lot of chippiness going on, a lot of action, a lot of um, smack talking. It's kind of what you want to see when you're watching live basketball. And um, hopefully this second half we'll get to see a little a little bit more of that, but a little less chippiness, just some good basketball going on. Well, I, I think that we should be in for a even better second half. As I said, the Condors only with a five-point lead right now, but they've been doing some uh, some good things after the first few minutes there in that first quarter. Uh, they finally settled down, got some offensive rhythm into their gameplay, and uh, have really been able to convert since then. Yeah, um, pretty much it's been a good ha- – it was a good half out of the Condors. They started out kind of chippy. and uh, I'm not, not chippy, but they, they started out kind of, you know, 
not getting the ball, passing the ball around. And then in the second quarter at the end, it kind of was the same thing. But all in all, the Condors played a really good brand of basketball. And it looks like we'll have uh, A.J. Davis, Richie Gordon, Brett McKnight, Boo Osborne out here to start. That's four out of the five that they need. Looks like probably Todd Brown as well. Uh, but, but yeah, you, back to what you were talking about, the chippiness that both of these teams are playing with. You see uh, Brett McKnight and Richie Gordon uh, for the Condors, but for the uh, Owensboro Thoroughbreds, Chuck Agbado is. It, it, it's For some of these guys, it's just in their nature. Yes, it's, it's one of those things that, you know, if, if I can get under your skin, I'm going to do it. Right. And it's just, that's just what it was for, especially for Agbado and a little bit of McKnight as well. So Owensboro starts the ball here with this, starts with the ball here in the second half and can't convert on their first possession. So A.J. Davis will have the ball for the Condors. Passes it over to Osborne, trying to find Gordon down low. Gordon couldn't quite finish that. And we're gonna get a late whistle here on Lou File as Gordon went up for that shot. Yeah, Lou File went up for the block and it just he just didn't get there in enough time and, and drew that foul. Lou File not happy that the whistle came in pretty late. Looked like the ref might have been waiting to see if uh, the ball fell or not. But nonetheless, Gordon is going to the line to shoot two and rattles the first one in. Knocks in the second one and gives the Condors a 53-46 lead here. Hart gets it up ahead to Milligan. Milligan trying to find a loop file, nothing there. Hart now finds Lou File. Lou File trying to find a shot. Good defense there by Gordon. He almost lost that ball there. As Davis brings it up to court. Gives it over to Osborne, trying to set something up here. He'll find McKnight. McKnight couldn't get a handle on it to pass it over to Gordon. Instead, McKnight will take it in for the floater himself. <laughs> Good floater by McKnight starting out the second half just like he did in the first. Condors first two possessions. They're able to capitalize on both. Wilford with the three for Owensboro and Wilford has the hot hand right now for the Thoroughbreds team. Yeah, Wilford has been keeping this team in this game the whole end of the second first half and then as going into the second half, he's doing the same thing. Four, five, threes Hill for Wilford as he's kept them close. Nice find to McKnight. <laughs> Richie Gordon finds McKnight with the, with the hand tied up it looked like. McKnight's one of those players who's he's always around the bucket. <laughs> he all he always looks like right there. He made a good defensive play. He just has a knack for the basketball, whether it's shooting, passing, or stealing it, or making that good rebound. Wilford passes it over to Milligan. Milligan tried dunking on Richie Gordon, but Ricky Richie Gordon's going to send him to the line and make him earn the two the hard way. Richie Gordon and Evan Milligan giving each other a little respect after that, you know, didn't want anything serious coming out of that. Oh yeah, for sure. As you can see the commissioner down there, he's watching as well, so good job out of yes. those guys. I'm sure he's been around for all this chippiness too, but. <laughs> yeah, I didn't even think about that, <laughs> that he was down there watching it. Milligan goes to the line and he'll convert on both free throws, so. Condors now with a 57 to 51 lead, 9:45 here in the in the third. AJ Davis ends up taking on Lou File, but couldn't convert. Wilford the other way, slown down by Osborne. Passes over to Milligan. And Gordon looks like he's gonna get called for that one as Milligan went up for the shot. It almost looked like Milligan traveled a little bit. Milligan, the uh, 
6'4 forward. Says 6'4, but I think he's a little bit closer to 6'6, 6'7. How familiar are you with Owensboro in Kentucky? I am not that familiar, unfortunately. I'm wondering, is that the bridge from to Owensboro in their jerseys? Has to be, right? Oh, it's very possible. All that history stuff I learned in high school, I don't remember much of that anymore. <laughs> All about my states and everything. Right. Jackson kicks it over to McKnight in the corner. Who's able to knock down that three? Good looking shot there by Brett McKnight. And of course, McKnight has something to say about knocking down that wide open shot. <laughs> Milligan takes that three for Owensboro and can't convert. Davis quickly up ahead to Todd Brown in the corner. He'll take a three and he'll knock that one down. Good shot by Todd Brown. He's been pretty quiet this game, so looking for him to get a shot off. As well as Boo Osborne. Couple opportunities by Brown that he couldn't convert on earlier in this game, but is able to knock down that corner three. And Owensboro will take a timeout with 8.37 left to go here in the third quarter as the Condors have extended this lead to 10, 63 to 53. And this is the, the Condors team that, you know, when they get out running on, on the fast breaks, when they can run and capitalize on their offensive plays and get the ball movement, they're, uh, they're able to convert and able to score. And we've seen it here so far in this third quarter. Yeah, and that's the thing with the Condors. I mean, it's, it's, it's typical basketball. You have to play defense. You have to put the ball in the bucket. And you, and you just have to make good shots and make good passes. So they're doing all of that right now on all cylinders. And as a result of that, they have a 10-point lead. And uh, Owensboro has come out to start this second half a little slow, maybe uh, a couple of these threes, these past threes that the Condors have knocked down. Maybe they're starting to get a little frustrated. The Condors have also caused a couple turnovers here against this thoroughbred team. And so far, Condors starting off the, the second half strong. Owensboro just trying to find something to work. I don't think that we've seen Ogbato touch the ball here in this second half. Yeah, it, it looks like, you know, I know we're still relatively early in the third quarter, but Owensboro just hasn't been able to get into a rhythm so far. And um, the Condors have been capitalizing on that. So out of that timeout, Owensboro will keep the ball. Hart gets it over to Wilford, and there they go. Get it down to Ogbato, then gives it to a cutting Milligan. And I think Milligan has scored six of the six straight points here for the Thoroughbreds. Yeah, Milligan's been coming in this second half. Didn't really notice him a lot in the first half to the end, and he's been coming in. He's giving them that spark that they need. Now you just got to get some more buckets from Agbado, as like he was in the first half, and get Lou Fowl in the game. Todd Brown takes that three, and that one comes up just short. Hart finds Wilford. Wilford already has knocked down about four or five threes in this game. Got to get him going in his second half as well. Wilford kicks it over to Hart, trying to get it down to Ogbato. They do. A.J. Davis with the defense on him. And a size advantage there, fairly differential for Ogbato to be able to get the easy two points. There's a, yeah, yeah, he gets that. That first time when he gets the ball, he throws his body into the player. He has to be a little bit careful with that because they could call that as an offensive foul. Mm -hmm. A.J. Davis ends up taking it to the basket, and Ogbato is going to get called for that foul as Davis went to the ground. So he'll go to the line and shoot two. Two straight possessions Owensboro has been able to capitalize on to bring this deficit down to six. 63-57 right now, pending these free throws. Davis's first one is up and good. And he's able to knock down the second one. 65-57, 7.30 left here in the third. Osborne over, all over Wilford, bringing the ball up the floor. 
ends up uh, shaking Osborne a little bit. Lou File couldn't quite get a handle on the ball. Looks like he might have got hit in the head or something. He's a little slow to get down the floor. Him and Aaron Jackson might have collided. Wilford made Osborne slip a little bit out there. Just a little bit, but nonetheless, A.J. Davis is able to score on the other side for the Condors and take this back deficit back up to double digits. I think, he's, I think Davis is creating a lot of, uh, you know, problems for for the guards, for the, um, the thoroughbreds because of his size. Mm -hmm. Matthew Hart able to convert on that layup for Owensboro. McKnight with the ball, ends up finding Todd Brown in the corner. That three's off the mark. Matthew Hart quickly the other way for Owensboro. He'll pull up and take the mid-range jumper. That one comes up just short, though. And, and he, even though Brown didn't get that shot off, you could see there was a lot of pass, a lot of ball movement in that, and it was a great shot. It just didn't knock it down. A.J. Davis going up against Osbato, ends up losing his footing. He might have slipped a little bit, and I think you're right here in the second, back there in the second quarter, people have been starting to slip a little bit more as Osbato's there for the offensive rebound. I think that floor is a little wet out there. Owensboro brings it back to within six, 67-61. Osborne finds McKnight. McKnight ends up taking it all the way to the basket himself, and he'll get that runner to, to fall. As you can see, Wilford, he's he's complaining that the floor is wet out there as the players from the Condors are trying to wipe it off. Hart finds Milligan, but his... And we can hear Todd Brown down here in front of us saying that people had stopped playing because the whistle was blown. But the ref talking to Coach Ballard says that the three is still good. I'm not exactly sure what happened in that situation right there. Looks like to me, maybe the Condor stopped playing because they thought that the ball was going to get stopped because of the floor. But Milligan came down and shot that three, and not for sure what really came well, about it. It that. looked like that they had blown the whistle, and then Milligan made the three as Aaron Jackson makes that one for the Condors. It sounded like the whistle blew right before Milligan took the three. So everybody had kind of stopped, but nonetheless, some things have been sorted out here. Good take and Jackson. that ball ends up in the hands of Milligan and an official timeout as he wants to uh, get this stuff. The perspiration on the floor cleaned up some. Yeah, we've really seen in this third quarter, a lot of players starting to slip more and more. Yes. I don't know if that's something from the floor or is it just players falling and... From bodies falling, yeah. I'm not sure what it is exactly, but... Coach Ballard down there, not only the head coach, but on the cleaning staff as well. Just under five minutes to play here in the third quarter, though. 4.52. The Condors have a 71-66 to 66 lead. And you could possibly make a case that this third quarter has maybe started to get a little sloppy between both teams. Yeah, it is. And, you know, a lot of it has to do with the floor, but mm -hmm. a lot of it is just, you know, I, I just don't think, you know, it's just sloppy play right now. Right. I mean, nonetheless, both teams have been able to convert. As I said, it is a 71-66 advantage for the Condors. Todd Brown has the ball, trying to get past Milligan. Ends up passing it down to Boo Osborne. And 
with two of the bigger bodies, Agbato and Milligan, around him. Boo Osborne is still able to convert that one and go to the line for an and one. Good job by Boo Osborne. Going up against the 6'6", Milligan and 6'10", Ogbato. He was still able to absorb the contact and finish. Osborne will go to the line for one and try and make this an eight point game. Boo Osborne's been pretty quiet this game. Haven't seen a whole lot out of him. Even though he's been on the floor, he's making some defensive plays, but has been a lot of doing scoring in the scoring box. I think that's what Osborne is, one of the best things he's known for is, he's, he's one of the guys that's able to make the hustle plays. Right. Agbato with the ball down low against McKnight. And ends up getting the friendly roll. Because McKnight played solid defense there, but Agbato was just able to knock down the fadeaway. <laughs> Agbato screams out, baby. Good take by Boo Osborne. Yeah. Ends up creating his own space and finds the wide open lane. 345 left here in the third, 75-68. Agbato against McKnight again. That one's too strong. Brown passes it down to Jackson. He has Eves guarding him. Jackson will take a fadeaway shot and is able to get that one to fall. Jackson's coming alive this second half, providing that spark off the bench. Haven't seen a whole lot of none at all for the um, thoroughbreds this second half. No, I don't I don't believe that they've made any substitutions except JB on Eves, who just came in recently. McKnight can't get that one to fall. Kicks it out to A.J. Davis. A.J. will pump fake. Ends up kicking it in. Todd Brown and, and the refs heard a fan yell out three seconds and decided to call it against Brett McKnight. And we will have a media timeout here, it looks like, with 2.53 left to play in the third. The Condors with a nine-point lead, 77-68. And Randall, those past couple possessions, uh, we've seen the, the Condors, we've uh, seen the Condors really capitalize on their offensive plays. Yeah, they're doing exactly what they were supposed to do, getting good shots, good passes off, and just executing on the offensive side of the ball. And it's nice when it's, you know, a, a fix like that can be so simple but can make a tremendous difference. Exactly, exactly. You know, one thing about it is if you can get down here and, and, and execute the play and get a good play off, you have shooters, you have ball handlers, you have guys who can put the ball in the bucket. Good things are going to come out of that. So out of this break, the... Condors have six guys on the floor. And looks like Khalil McCormick will realize that and come off. So Jalen Hearn, Aaron Jackson, Jalen Benton, Todd Brown, and Boo Osborne out there for the Condors. And what looks to be a, a little bit smaller lineup here, as I believe Aaron Jackson is the tallest one at 6'7 on the floor for the Condors. Yeah, we're seeing Hearn and Benton come in for the first time this uh Second half. Three taken by Milligan is off the mark. Davis quickly up ahead to Aaron Jackson. And Jackson thought it went, and Coach Bauer both thought that it went off the backboard first as Milligan blocked it, but they wanted a goal 10. Nonetheless, Owensboro turns it over the other way, so the Condors will still retain possession. Still haven't seen any none yet come in for the thoroughbred as we have changed guards for the Condors. Go, 
Davis gets the ball from Hearn. He'll end up taking a mid-range jumper, just too strong. And Matthew Hart only having a couple, one or two baskets this game, but he is, uh, he is doing a good job as the role of the point guard, a true point guard, creating shots for others and finding the open man. Exactly, and that's what a point guard is all about. Nice ball movement here by the Condors as Benton gets an open three but can't convert. Hearn there for the board, kicks it over to Brown, and he gets that three to fall as he looks up to the sky and says, finally. <laughs> And you see what happens when you move the ball and, and you get good shots off. Buckets will fall. Columbus extending the lead now, 80 to 68, 115 left to play in the third. Wilford, the hot hand for Owensboro, can't get it to fall. Milligan is there for the offensive rebound, but Benton, I believe, is going to get called for that foul for the Condors. And Randall, here comes your guy checking in for Owensboro, Darius Nunn. Kind of anxious to see how this game will change with Nunn coming in. Not, don't know if it will, but just kind of anxious to see what he'll do in this second half. As they take Agbado out, he looks a little winded. Yeah, so they have both of their big guys off of the floor. Looks like Cameron Moore will be their biggest player at 6'8". Darius Nunn, Javion Eves, Evan Milligan, Cameron Moore and Matthew Hart out there for Owensboro. Hart trying to find a lane. Good defense there by Hearn. And Milligan is there to clean up the offensive board and Milligan having himself a good third quarter. Milligan's having a great third quarter. All of his points, other than the free throw line, coming right there around the basket. Todd Brown kicks out to Davis, who then fights Benton. And uh, Jalen Benton going to get called for the offensive hook. With 40 seconds left here, 80 to 70 lead for the Columbus Condors team. We were talking about that Nunn and Hart uh, backcourt. They're actually out there right now, so let's see how this works. Maybe Nunn will take over more of the true point guard role, and Nunn couldn't get that layup to fall, but no one put a body on Cameron Moore as he's able to clean, ever, clean all that up. Great put back by Cameron Moore. A.J. Davis will take it all the way to the basket, and Eves was cutting in front of him, so he'll pick up that foul and send A.J. Davis to the line for the chance for the three-point play. You know, the size of A.J. Davis has been bottom the thoroughbreds all day long. He wasn't knocking down all those shots that he was coming to the hole with, but I'm looking at it and it says if, if he can come in and make some of those shots that he, when he's penetrating to the hole, he's going to be a nightmare for these smaller guards, the thoroughbred. Absolutely. 25 seconds left. And it'll stay a 10-point lead for the Condors, 82-72. Only uh, the game clock is an advantage of the shot clock, so they will hold for the last shot here. Five seconds left, kicks it out to Moore. Moore will take the long two and gets that one to fall. Good shot and by Moore. Yes, it was. Good find, able to capitalize on that last possession of the quarter. And with that, the Condors have an 82-75 to 75 lead here after three quarters. We will take a short break and be back right after this. This is TBL Basketball on the Score on Air Network.
Have you always dreamed about a career in sports broadcasting but aren't sure where to begin? Well, if so, then look no further than the Sports Emphasis Program at The Ohio Media School. Whether in front of the camera, on the microphone, or behind the scenes, you'll learn from a pro to be a pro in the Sports Emphasis Program at The Ohio Media School. You'll get hands-on training and live in-the-field experience at some of Ohio's biggest sporting events. You'll be the star of your very own webcast, and you'll get the opportunity to interview some of Ohio's biggest athletes. Call us today at 614-655-5250 or visit our website at beonair.com. Back here at the United Sports Center for today's TBL matchup between the Columbus Condors and the Owensboro Thoroughbreds, where the Condors have an 82 to 75 lead over the Thoroughbreds. Seth Onahoe alongside Randall Smith and Randall. It's been, uh, it, it all comes down to this, the fourth and final quarter. This is what it's all about. This is why you throw your fours up in the last quarter of the game. We're going to see what these two teams are all about, which should be an exciting fourth quarter. Owensboro winning their game yesterday against the Dayton Flight, 128-121. So they're looking to continue their hot streak to the, to the season. As Richie Gordon gets fouled going up for that shot, he'll go to the line for, for one. Kind of surprised they kept that. That was an and one. I mean, it was kind of late, but hey, if the ref calls it, it's what he sees. Right. As I said, Owensboro winning their game yesterday. Columbus Condors opened their season on Friday, dropping their first game of the year to the Indy Express 115-105. So Condors trying to find their first win of the season, and what better place than to do it here at home? Donovan Griffith passes it over to Hart. He can't convert, and Moore will get called for that foul. He's calling it over the back. Lou File checking back in for Owensboro. I think they want to kind of, you know, if, 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 I, if I was a thoroughbreds coach, I would try to get Lou File involved. This is a perfect time to get him involved. Yes, Ogbato on the bench. He is their, their true big man out on the floor right now. Going to Richie Gordon here for a second straight possession. He's trying to get the fade away. And, uh, that hits everything but the rim. <laughs> Good try, though, by Richie Gordon there. Darius Nunn. Started by Jalen Hearn. Kicks it over to Griffith. Griffith will take the mid-range jumper. And he's able to get that one to fall. Good looking shot there by Donovan Griffith. Great ball movement by the thoroughbred. Managed to come down and play some good defense. Cuts the lead down to 84-77. Benton on the pass from Richie Gordon. Good find there, but Benton went up for the shot. It looks like Griffith fouled him. And we'll send Benton to the line for two. And that was a great find at the top of the key. Um, is that by Richie Gordon? Mm -hmm. First one from Benton is up and good. Benton knocks down both. He gives the Condors an 86-77 lead. Hearn all over none as Hearn, uh, none passes it off to Griffith. Over to Eves and down to Lou File and Lou File able to spin off of McCormick and get his basket. Good take by Lou Fowl to spin. Like I said, you know, you get, the, you get this guy involved, you can go a long way. Benton circling all around the lane, ends up kicking it out to McCormick. Finds Gordon, but that one will be knocked out by Griffith and will stay down here with the Condors. and tried getting it up to uh, Gordon, but that one was just too far away. However, McCormick ends up with the ball and he'll knock down the three. Good shot by Khalil McCormick. 
Remaining in the game. Every time the thoroughbreds fight back, the Condors find a way to get the ball in the bucket as well. And Eves is able to knock that one in as I think Benton is going to pick up that foul. Got him on the arm as he was going up. He's able to convert on the end one. Cuts the Condors lead down to seven. Gordon gets the ball from Osborne. Gordon takes it all the way with Lufi all over him, but Gordon's able to finish that one. Kind of thought he was going to get the foul for that, too. Made the body contact as well. It looks like so far in this quarter that the Condor's defensive intensity has picked up. I mean, that's what you need in the fourth quarter. You need that defensive intensity. You know, when you're tired and you it's time to give up, you got to dig down deep to find some good defense in you. And this is possibly where that depth that we had talked about in the beginning of the game can come into play. Exactly. Darius Nunn's able to get that mid-range jumper to fall. And we see uh, Kenny Council checking in for the Condors that before that last possession. Hearn finds Gordon, ends up cutting. Gordon doesn't hand it off. Gordon ends up getting it with Griffin over him. And it looks like Griffin was trying to go for the jump ball. But yeah, it looks like that the ref is going to say that he got him on the arm and was holding his arm rather than the ball. I think it's about time to get Acabado back in the game. Just under nine minutes left to go here in the fourth. As Richie Gordon goes to the line, knocks down his first one. And that goes two for two. Darius Nunn quickly the other way for Owensboro. Couldn't find a lane though. He's guarded by Council. He's able to get that long two to go. Good shot by Eves as he stares at the basket after he makes the shot. 93-86, lead for the Condors. Osborne trying to find something. Ends up taking it to the basket and knew it was an and one before the shot even went up as uh, I believe that was Griffith or Wilford who uh, had, had given him a shove as he was going up for that shot. Good take by Boo Osborne. He's come alive this whole second half. Really stepping up here for the Condors team. He's able to convert on the and one. Darius Nunn. Nunn moves the ball quickly. <laughs> yeah, he's full speed all the time. Sometimes it can help you, sometimes it can hurt you. Nunn tried getting it down to Lou file, but Richie Gordon is going to pick up the foul as he tried coming through. Then Brett McKnight will check in for Gordon. Good job bringing that defensive intensity when he's guarding none. Wilford couldn't get that one to fall. You no, know, I just don't think that was a great shot by Wilford. I think he could have looked for a better pass, looked for a better shot. Nice ball movement here by the Condors as Osborne's able to get that three to go. What can you say about Boo Osborne? He's come alive this whole second half. He's knocked on a lot of shots for the Condors. JV on Eves the other way, though, says I can do the same thing. Condors have a 99-89 advantage right now. Osborne kicks it over to McCormick. That three just too strong. Hands, though, by Osborne knocks it out, but ends up in Eves' hands. And Eves not able to finish off that layup. And uh, as Griffith was trying to get it down to Luke file, Knight kicked that one away. 
Pirates. And it will stay here with the Thoroughbreds. Todd Brown and uh, Todd Brown checks in for Jalen Hearn. with the ball, gets it over to Hart. Hart trying to take that mid-range jumper. That one's short. Good defense there by, by Khalil McCormick. He was able to contest that one. Osborne with the ball, finds Council. And before he knocks it in, the ref says that he stepped on the baseline and it will go the other way to Owensboro. Kenny Council, he had the shot. Looked like they were going to count it, but ball's going the other way. And it looks like we are going to have our first media timeout here of the quarter with 6.53 to play in this fourth and final quarter. The Condors have a 99 to 89 lead. And Randall, the, uh, the Condors have really picked it up here defensively in this fourth quarter. Yeah, and that's what you want to see in the fourth quarter. Like I, like I mentioned earlier, you know, in the fourth quarter, you have to dig deep to play defense. Because a lot of times, it's you know, we're spending so much, you're spending so much energy on offense trying to score the ball when it just comes down to defense and who can stop who at the end. Mm -hmm. And you had mentioned earlier at the beginning of this game that the depth of the benches might be a factor here and if that defensive intensity is to continue for the Condors I think that that will be at an, at an advantage for the Condors over the thoroughbreds yeah when you just look down at these benches and you and you look over at the thoroughbreds there's four guys on the bench for them and the Condors has about five or six guys on the bench for them and they're rotating their players in and out so you know it, it's just a natural thing that's going to happen the more players you have the the more energy you can have. So Owensboro gets the ball out of this timeout. Griffith has the ball in his hands. Can't connect on that long range jumper. Griffith tried getting that steal though. Osborne able to keep it and Griffin trying to plead his case, but Osborne causes Griffith to pick up the foul. And we are going to be in the bonus, so that foul sends Osborne to the line. Not for sure of Agbato's foul situation, but I think it's pretty much time to get him in back into the game. And we have not seen him since the end of the third quarter. So there's 6.33 left to play here in this fourth. Osborne's first one is up and good. As we see Millingen checking back in for uh, Donovan Griffith. 6.33 left. Osborne's second one is up and good. Aaron Jackson has just got back into the game. Uh, kind of looking at it, keeping an eye on him to see what he's going to do in these last few minutes of the game as well. Wilford takes a step back three, and Wilford has been feeling it behind the line for Owensboro. Wilford with a good jump shot. Keep this game still going. I believe that's his 6-3 of this contest as he's had the hot hand for Owensboro outside the, the three-point line. McKnight can't get that one to fall. Millingen quickly the other way for Owensboro. Can't get it, but Lufa was there to clean it up. One oh one ninety four lead here for the Condors. Five forty five. Thoroughbreds are trying to keep this game alive. A lot of energy coming off the bench, especially from Agbato. Brown kicks it down to Council. Council will take the turnaround mid-range jumper, but can't get that one to fall. Hart quickly the other way. And as 
Wilford and Milligan got tangled up. The ball ended up going out of bounds, and that's a costly turnover for Owensboro. Very costly. Turnovers are key right now in this last few minutes of this fourth quarter. You can't have that many turnovers. Breath over here to get things cleaned up. Boo Osborne alongside Todd Brown, A.J. Davis who just checked in, Aaron Jackson and Brett McKnight. Eves, Wilford, Lufile, Milligan and Hart out there for Owensboro. As we're approaching five minutes left to play here in the fourth. Brown trying to get the ball to Davis, but eventually McKnight does. Ball ends up in Aaron Jackson's hand, and he will go to the line to try and convert his three-point play. Good way to find the ball around the rim for Jackson. Looked like Davis wanted the ball down low, and Todd Brown didn't pass it to him, but McKnight gets the ball from Brown, from Brown and just throws it down there, and the ball ended up in Jackson's hand. And he will convert the three-point play. Lead back to double digits, 10-point lead for the Condors. And as Lufile went down on the ground, it looks like his back was on that out-of-bounce line. Costly turnover for the Thoroughbreds. That's back-to-back -back possessions for Owensboro that have resulted in turnovers. Cleaning crew been busy here in this second quarter, or second half, excuse me. As it looks like Owensboro will take a timeout. With just under five minutes left to play, 104-94 advantage here for the Columbus Condors. And Randall, as I said, those past two possessions have ended up in turnovers for the Owensboro Thoroughbreds. Yeah, it's not a good look when you, you know, when you're down this, at this point in the game, you got under five minutes left, you're down 10. You got to be careful with those turnovers because those turnovers could be costly. Yes, and as I said, they are down 10 right now, so you need to take advantage of every opportunity that you can whenever you get the ball on offense. For Columbus, though, they're, they're, they're doing some good things here to try and close out this game. They're taking, ball, they're taking care of the ball. Uh, they're trying to find players that can score in this situation, and because of that, they have a 104-94 lead. Yeah, they've been pretty consistent this whole fourth quarter. Um, Agbado's not been in the game this whole, pretty much at all, this fourth quarter. Looks like he's coming out there now. Um, I don't know if the coach went a little bit too long without putting him in the game, but. Well, the, whenever they are. Uh, he's still not in the game. Yeah, he's still not in the game. It looks like whenever Owens, whenever the players for Owensboro are, are out on the court, they tend to play for a longer for longer minutes, they don't substitute regularly like I guess you could say Columbus has been doing. Right. Davis over to Osborne and gets it down to Jackson. Jackson with a smaller Hart guarding him, but good defense there by Hart. Hart loses it. Ends up in the hands of Javion Eves, though, and Eves is able to knock down that corner three and bring it to within seven. <laughs> I think some of the Condors <laughs> uh, benches over there screaming that heart up and down with the ball. I'm assuming somebody touched it from the Condor. And looks like Hart is a little slow to move as he just intentionally fouled Osborne and he, as he was bringing the ball up the floor. He's needs some assistance to be able to help off. So hopefully nothing too serious there. Not sure what's going on with Ogbato. Osborne is at the line to shoot two. 
comes up short on the first one. That keeps it at a seven point game, 104-97, just 4.15 left here in the fourth. Second one is up and knocks that one through. Matthew Hart over there took his shoe off. So he said, hopefully it's nothing too serious right there for the guard. Milligan with the ball with Jackson against him. And Milligan definitely wanted a foul. A lot, of, a lot of contact that was going on down there. I thought I was look, I thought they would have called that foul. However, the ball last touched right there by Aaron Jackson, I believe, so it, it will stay with Owensboro. Owensboro coach Mark Anderson not happy with the foul not being called. Balls passed in to Eves. Eves taking a long two there. He's able to knock that one in. Eves having himself a good fourth quarter here. A couple baskets for Javion. Good shot by Eves. Now you're, if, you're, if you're the thoroughbreds, you need to get a few stops right here. Ball passed down low to Richie Gordon, but he couldn't keep a handle on it. That could be a costly turnover here for Columbus as Eves the other way, trying to convert on that three, can't. Lufio ends up with the board. He can't get his second chance opportunity to fall. And Columbus will bring it the other way with 3.20 left here in the fourth. I think, I think if uh, Lofi would have just jumped up with one foot, like he jumped up with two feet, he could have got off the ground a little bit better. And a timeout will be called here by the Condors. As there's 3.15 left to play here in the fourth quarter. And Columbus has a 105-99 advantage. And as we had mentioned earlier, some of these turnovers could prove to be costly. You want to make sure that you're taking care of the ball in these final few minutes of the game as that could be a, a you know, huge reason that the outcome will be the way that it will be. Yeah, the, the thoroughbreds didn't take care of the ball in those two um, turnovers. And sometimes, you know, you, you can't talk about the last play, but sometimes those last couple plays are what hurts you. And mm -hmm. you can't, you get, you dig yourself into a hole and you just can't get out of it. And we've seen on that Condor's last possession that Osborne tried forcing the ball down low to Gordon with what looked to be three jer yellow jerseys around him and they turned it over. Luckily, Owensboro wasn't able to capitalize on that. Yeah, um, one thing you gotta worry about is just, like you, we just talked about, not turning over the ball and getting good shots at times like this. Condors with the ball out of the timeout. As I said, 105-99, 3.15 left here in the game. Osborne will get it into Gordon. Looks like uh, Owensboro's in a zone defense as McKnight can't knock down that three and none quickly coming the other way for Wilford who has the hot hand and that one is nothing but net by Corey Wilford. I think you know that was a great shot when none has a knack to just find the open player out there and make the right play and make the right pass. And that whole time that whole time down the floor none was looking for somebody to be open. Yeah, he's, he's, a, he's a special player, very special player. And right now, if you're the Condors, you have to know where Wilford will be at as he's had the hot hand this whole game for Owensboro. Brett McKnight gets the ball in the post with the smaller Eves against him. He can't get his first one to go. Then he goes against the bigger Lou File and is able to get that one in. Yeah, Lou File didn't even really contest that shot. I don't know what's, what went on with that situation. Wilford here with a straight on three, can't get that one in. That right there I think was a, a, a shot that could, shouldn't have been taken. It was pretty fast in the play clock. And they're gonna get a, 
offensive three second call on Richie Gordon as he had Eves posted up, but no one was able to find an open passing lane to get it to him. And Chuck Ogbado finally checking in here for the last two minutes of this game for Owensboro. See if he could be a potential deciding factor for Owensboro. Oh, I don't know if it's, as it's possible that he's been on the bench a little too long. And Darius Nunn is able to knock down that corner three off the feed from Corey Wilford. And just like that, with 150 left, the Condors are only up by two at 107-105. Got ourselves a ball game here. And Ogbato is going to get called for that foul as Richie Gordon was trying to post him up. Ogbato ended up moving a little bit and Richie Gordon started falling to the ground. They're saying that Ogbato had used his arms and shoved him down a little bit. It looks like he's trying to explain himself to the referees about what he actually did. Ogbato obviously not happy with the call right now. Because of that, Gordon will go to the line and shoot two. Can't connect on the first one. Not only turnovers here in the final minutes of this game, but also you gotta knock down clutch free throws if yeah, you're both teams. Gotta knock down those freebies. Everything counts right now, everything. Jackson ends up checking in for McKnight as Gordon knocks down one of two, extends the lead to three with 135 left here in the fourth. None brings the ball up the floor for Owensboro. Has Aaron Jackson on him. None takes the deep contested two and he's able to knock that one in. Good shot by None. Richie Gordon ends up getting the ball from Osborne. And Wilford, yep, he will take credit for that foul as he will send Richie Gordon to the line. With 1.15 left here to go. Richie Gordon hasn't knocked down a lot of his free throws today. Let's see if he can knock down these two. Went one for two, his last possession down the floor. First one is up though and good. Second one is up and knocks down both of those and extends the lead back to three, 110-107. Good defense there by A.J. Davis as he's able to knock that one out. But it will stay with the thoroughbreds. It was almost a steal. A.J. Davis quick and, and long as one of the point guards on this team, if you will. None kicks it out to Eves. Eves will end up taking it all the way. And a late whistle is gonna be called against, I believe, A.J. Davis. Yes, that one is gonna go on A.J. Davis. And like I said, it seemed to be that that whistle was a little late. It definitely was late whistle. However, J.B. on Eves will go to the line for the thoroughbreds. Knocks in his first one to cut it to within two. Brett McKnight checking back in for the Condors as Aaron Jackson goes out. Eves' second one is up and good. Osborne has the ball, trying to find something. Ends up kicking it to McKnight. Blocked from behind by Milligan, but it seemed like that whistle was a little too late as well. That was a late call as well. Late whistle. 
However, that foul on Milligan will send Brett McKnight to the line to try and get this lead back to three. McKnight's first one is up and just short. Forty-five seconds left here in the fourth. 110-109. McKnight has his second one to go. Can't get that one to fall either, and that one was last touched by A.J. Davis as it'll go Owensboro away. We see Richie Gordon knocks Obato out of bounds. Really? Richie, Richie Gordon trying to trying to get that offensive rebound just in case it was missed. He almost had it just past the outstretched <laughs> arms of Gordon. I think he was kind of upset that Abato was screaming A the whole time he was taking his free throw shots. <laughs> However, Brett McKnight misses both of his free throw shots and it stays at 110 to 109 with 42 seconds left here. Couple big shots here. Late into the fourth quarter for Owensboro was able to get this back to within, you know, within five, within the past two minutes. Yeah, those were costly free throws because now you can come down. If you'd have made both of those free throws, you could have came down and, you know, it's possibly a three-point game or a two-point game. Now all you gotta do is come down here and make one bucket and you're up one or two. And it seems like here in the second half, especially in this fourth quarter, the refs have, you know, if there is a potential foul that is available, then the refs will call it. Condors do have a couple fouls to give though, if they so choose. Richie Gordon with a great post defense there, it looks like. Ball's inbounded to Wilford. He's going to be trying to look for a shot, I'd say. Kicks it over to Agbato. None kicks it over to Eves. And then Davis able to get his long fingertips on that. Wilford takes a fadeaway shot. Can't get that one to fall. And Richie Gordon the other way. And he's going to get fouled with 23 seconds left. And Gordon will go to the line for two. Bad shot selection by the thoroughbreds down there. I thought they could have got bad, a better, better, better looking shot. Was that. it a bad shot selection or good defense by the Condors? Uh, it could have been both. I, I, I can't see the, the the time clock, so I'm not for sure. Eves did have a good look at three, but the hustle by A.J. Davis as Richie Gordon misses his first one. A.J. Davis was able to get a block on Eves' three-point attempt. Yeah. And after Gordon missing the first one, it stays 110-109. His second one is up and is able to get that one to fall. And Owensboro will call a timeout. 111-109. Condors are up 23 seconds left. And Randall, who's to say what this game might be like if the Condors have been able to would be able to knock down these clutch free throws? Yeah, I think it would be pretty much it would be a tougher game for the thoroughbreds to win. But now you're looking at it, you know, one possession game. You can either score a two point bucket and tie it up or three point game and win the game. I'm assuming the thoroughbreds are going to play for the final shot. So there's 23.3 seconds, so they don't have a shot clock to worry about. Two will tie it. Three to will send it to overtime. And as I said, uh, the Condors do have a couple fouls to give if they think that there will be, a, you know, an easy opportunity that they could get beat on that Owensboro would be able to score. They would be able to foul and not have to worry about sending them to the free throw line. I don't know who you would go to in the throw. What, what would you What would you do? Would you go down low, maybe to Agbato, or would you let uh, Nunn uh, penetrate and look for an open three? Well, the way Nunn has been playing here in this fourth quarter, he has been able to find the open guy. Um, he's able to been able to find Wilford for one or two threes. He's been able to find JV on Eves, who's knocked down a couple big shots. So. 
it all just depends. Right now, none will be taking the ball out. Eves, Wilford, Blue File, Milligan, none out there for Owensboro. He will get the ball in to Wilford. Wilford finds a cutting Eves, who then finds Milligan in the corner, none. Gets that one. And there's going to be a defense or an offensive three seconds on Owensboro, on our Owensboro, on Meshack Lufile. And on a possession where you needed a bucket to tie it up potentially, you end up turning the ball over. Yeah, on something like a three second call, that, those are just calls where you have to just, you know, have in your mind. I'm right here, it's, it's been three seconds. Get out of the paint. It looks like Columbus calls a timeout just to talk things over, make sure they set something up to get the ball in the hands of their best free throw shooters, as they still only have a two point lead here, 111-109. Seven seconds ran off of the clock, though, for Owensboro. So there's 16.7 remaining here in the fourth. A.J. Davis, Todd Brown, Richie Gordon, Boo Osborne, and Brett McKnight out there for the Condors. Now, if I was the thoroughbreds, I would get a quick foul. They haven't been shooting good free throws this quarter. Foul as quick as possible. Yeah, they tried to play for the steal, was not able to get the turnover, so instead had to foul Todd Brown. Didn't take, uh, what, maybe a second off the clock, a yeah. second and a half off the clock, mm -hmm. so um, I don't know if Brown was the perfect guy to foul, but. I guess we'll find out right here as he's gonna go to the line and shoot two. Strategy was good. His first one is up and gets the friendly roll. Makes it 112, 109. Aaron Jackson comes in for Brett McKnight. Looks like a little offensive defensive game plan. One more bucket makes it a two possession game. Ogbato checking back in for Owensboro. You have three big guys on the floor right now for Owensboro. And Ogbato, Lufayo, and Milligan. Brown knocks down his second one though, extends it to four. Javion Eves will pull up and knock down that contested three. Oh, looks like he stepped out of bounds right there. Looks like Aaron Jackson and A.J. Davis were around Eves as he was able to pull up for that shot and still was able to knock it down. Ogbato trying to plead that there was, Eves got fouled as someone had undercut Eves in the middle of his shot. The refs, however, did not see that. But still, Eves brings it back to within one. 113-112 one with nine seconds to play now. Great confidence by Eves, though, to be able to pull up and knock down nothing but net on that three-point shot. Ogbato still trying to plead his case. <laughs> I think he wanted a little and one right there. As I'm sure that the uh, the refs have heard him talking enough to in today's game. And even with that said, there's still time to get a foul and get down and get a good shot off. Gordon gets it into Davis, up ahead to Todd Brown. Over the back. And he'll have an over and back as his toe was right there on the line. Yes, I saw that right in my face. Didn't know if the ref was going to catch that, though. And because of that, the ball goes back to Owensboro with six seconds left. And the Condors have a one-point lead. 
The Condors still do have one foul to give. Great defense there by Richie Gordon as he's able to knock that one away from Agbado. However, it was last touched by him and stays down here with the Thoroughbreds, 5.1. Wilford inbounds to Nunn. Davis all over him. Nunn with the running floater to win it, and he can't get it to fall. Great look right there by Darius Nunn, but just couldn't get it to fall. No, As he, A.J. Davis looked like he had he had Davis beat. He had him beat, but he kind of stumbled and fumbled with the ball in the beginning. I think he could have maybe passed the ball off and got a better shot. It looked like as Davis was going down, Nunn didn't, wasn't sure of what to do. As you said, he kind of lost control of the ball and wasn't sure if he wanted to try and find somebody, whatever the case may be. But we see Ogbato out there giving respects, each, everybody giving respects to each other. Even though it was, you know, a lot of smack talk in this game, these players still do respect each other. A lot of, a lot of, a lot of, a lot of smack talking going on in this game, but hey, that's basketball. What more could you ask for? Tough fought game between these two teams. Owen Bur Owensboro was down by probably about 10 with three or th two or three minutes left to go here in the fourth. But a couple big shots by Wilford and Eves got them back to within single digits to within a one possession game. But that last chance opportunity by Nunn just couldn't get it to fall. I think the Thoroughbreds fought hard in this game. I mean, they played a pretty good game all day today. Um, but I just think those those free throws by the Condors they missed, they almost could have coughed that game up because just making those, you know, let's just say they made three or four of those free throws down the stretch, they could have definitely iced that game. And then you had a turnover here at the end with the uh, behind the, uh, the, the, the backcourt violation. Uh, you know, it, it got kind of scary for the Condors. Yes, it did. However, the Condors are able to prevail and get their first win of the season here in their home opener. The Condors beat the Owensboro Thoroughbreds by a score of 113 to 112. That will wrap it up for today's contest. This is TBL Basketball here on the Screw on Air Network. We'll see you next time.